you know, a couple of things occurred to me while you were talking about that. Uh, in terms of uh, acting, in, term, in terms of storytelling, I think that what better training ground could you have in terms of becoming an actor and a storyteller? Because with karate, whenever you do karate, you're telling a story. When you, you want to see the level of someone's martial arts, I mean, especially in terms of karate, yeah. I'm, when I watch someone's kata, I'm, I'm asking for them to present themselves. And I don't mean, you know, present the real set. Yeah. Technique. yeah. Right, right, yeah. And um, so I think that, you know, when you were talking about what karate has given you, I mean, one uh, description of acting that I've heard is acting is not the art of acting, it's the art of reacting. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go no sin and, and, and uh, principles like that, being able to anticipate, being able to free yourself from any kind of expectation to be in the moment is really important. Also, too, if you're yeah. working in a medium as small as television or film, your most, um, from what I understand, your most subtle, you're working with a camera that can pick up your, the most subtle uh, right. direction. You know, so yeah. being able to have that level of control and understanding um, is different from theatre. So when you're doing theatre, you have to be larger to reach yeah. people exactly. in different places. So what could be a, a better training ground um, to do that than with karate? Now, you also talked about, you know, the notion of purification or misogi. And I think, as you said, the, you know, all, all cultures, all indigenous cultures have within them, or all cultures have the idea of purification, uh, the ritual of purification. In um, my culture, we call it akawatea, and it's usually to do with water, it's usually to do with fire, there's a whole lot of things yeah. that kind of, in ways in which Yeah, exactly, and, and you know, you're from New Zealand, I'm from, mm. uh, you know, like, let's say Israel, but we don't talk about Israel because we, mm. let's say that the, the Bible, yeah, the Bibles are, the Christians also believe in it, and when you talk about God, the first reference of it, God comes from the desert, yeah? And the desert is a hot place, you know, and you cannot run away from the, the sun, yeah? And the, the, the next reference is a big flood that occurred, yeah? And this flood is the water element. And then the next one is the reference is, you know, the, the sons of Israel dispersing yeah? into all, air, like all areas of the world, yeah? So it's, again, the air. And of course, the the fourth element is something new that is that is coming, yeah? the building of the new temple or or whatever. So you can you can see this almost in any culture. This image of of the alchemical process that that is um, making you into a better person. And in karate, especially in Wei Chi Ryu, you can see it very well. Yeah, because now nowadays Wei Chi Ryu, it, it, it's not no longer the three main katas. Yeah, because old style. It's three main kata, Sanchi Inste San, San Seriu. And then we have the lost kata, which is called Super Impe, yeah, 108. But for my opinion, it is, you know, it is not a, a fixed kata. You know, if you find a teacher that will teach you this kata, know that this teacher is probably not, it, I don't want to speak, but he's giving you his version of the kata. This kata should be very personal. Yeah? It should be very... Uh, changing it should be it should uh, contain personal myths of who you are and what brought you to this art and what you picked up along the way this also has a place in martial arts and martial arts is something that is has to evolve always and not evolve in a way that you put two people in a cage with short pants and let them beat each other to death yeah this is not martial arts this is entertainment and and martial arts should be very, it's a personal thing. It should be a very personal thing. And my teacher, when he when he used to teach me, he, he always said, yeah, when sometimes he used to close the lights, dim the lights. And he said, now you are no longer shy high. Now you are a tiger. Yeah? You do perform this kata like a tiger waiting to jump on his prey. Yeah. And you, 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 he said, now you are a dragon descending or ascending. And you, I really had to incorporate those feelings 
because it is a feeling because I don't know what is what it is mean to be a, a dragon or a tiger, but I can feel it. And, and nobody can say that I'm not feeling it. I'm feeling it. So if you are feeling it, let me see that you are what you are feeling. And and the thing is, when you are a beginner and you are trying to, you know, uh, put those uh, put those principles into action when you're performing a kata, you will never do it right yeah? uh, because you you still have those. Uh, thoughts about who, what, how, how it should be. Yeah. So the best way to really become you and really find who you find who you really are is again the restraints. Yeah. It teaches you the points of the kata, and you have to do it accurately. And you, you, you know, if, uh, you uh, cancel out all the the what you how you think it should should be, how you think the kata should should be performed you can set everything out yeah you just do the points of the kata and the teacher is watching you with very strict eyes and he said no you don't do this do this and you know shoulder down and this point this point this point and after a while after a few good years doing it very fixed then someday something changes yes within those uh, restraints within the, the those very strict frames something loosens up something it is called aji spice yeah the spice is 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 beginning to emerge from the inside yeah and then you wait a few more years and a few more years and a few more years and then when you look at the kata of the person you see the demon dances his demons or his angels or it's the same thing yeah but you see the insides of him performing something that is eternal you know there is a moment in time that you cannot it is a this is why you call it martial arts because it is an art and you cannot put it in words you cannot talk about uh the the aji you cannot talk about this spice but you can feel it and uh, you know and and i think for that you need a good a very good teacher that will hold the students and will give them the points and but will also know that when the time comes, he needs to release. Yeah, he needs to release the students to be whatever, whatever he is. Yeah, whatever he thinks he should be, whatever he feels, not things, whatever he feels he should be. Yeah. In um, Maori language, we have a, a term, and it's um, for leader. It's langatira, and langatira is composed of two words. Langa or lananga means to weave, and tira means people. And I think that's the kind of um, sensei that I certainly respect. I think, yeah, as you say, um, you know, James Pankovic, since our friend and our brother in Okinawa, has recently taught me a, a really interesting concept, and it's the concept of kizuna. The idea yeah, kizuna. That, yes. You know, for me, I think it relates to what you say in the sense that you need the kind of student, I uh, need the kind of sensei and teacher and guide who will weave who will, you, you can see the process of weaving those different strands together, but also yeah. not owning the rope, like saying, this is how I weave together, now how do you weave together? And I think sometimes yeah. people want to find shortcuts. People want to find the easy way to do it. And I can see clearly from, you, from your own journey over the years, there's been no, there's been no, no easy, there's been no easy steps. If I can pick you up on one thing that we, that you were talking about before and about, um, with your um, with your blog and making it a book, so certainly when you're on Netflix and and doing things, you know, can I just say also too, you are one scary mofo. When I've seen you on the screen, you're a scary dude, man. You're you're just like oh, your sunshine's very strong in those roles. It's very scary, dude. Um, and yet you're a completely you're you're a completely quiet almost shy kind of guy in actual life. Um, I, here's what I would say. You and I, I'm a bit older than you. I'm, I'm a bit longer than the tooth. I'm an elderly man in comparison to you. But there was a, a book or a comic or something that I read at some one point when I needed it in my life when, you know, like I grew up in, a, in situations from the sounds of it not too different to yours. And there was a person or a book or something 
that hit me, that landed with me. And I think that reading your reading your blog, if you were to put that out there, um, it's kind of like putting a message in a bottle and throwing it out to sea. And you know, the thing about that was we may never see the people who received that message, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't send that message. And yeah. I would encourage yeah. you to do yeah. that because I, I've really enjoyed this last weeks of kind of reading it and, and trying to under, yeah. under, you know, trying to to uh, well, it's wonderful reading, and I think you have to approach it from the idea of having an open mind and not being frightened to look deeper, to ask questions. So yeah. for you, the kind of the kind of sensei that you, uh, you know, you, you've got one of arguably one of the most famous and certainly to my mind, one of the best and well-known sensei in the world. Um, yeah. You know, there's a reason why Shinjo Sensei is known as Okinawan Superman. I mean, you know, like... He is a legend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. an absolute legend. So what do you aspire to be as a sensei, as a guide to your students? Do you... Do you, uh, uh, what do you want in a student and what do you try to be as a it is a good question because I still I still try to to answer this question myself you know I had you know I, I had my students are you know are um, also I think very good you know I had students that um, that that made it to very high levels and some of them became professional fighters you know um, and I can now I can remember now one student, it was uh, my top student for maybe 12 years. And he went on to be the first Israeli in the UFC. Uh, he's a professional fighter. He fights there nowadays. He's a professional fighter. But this this brought uh, between us, um, you know, a lot of stress. Yeah, because this is not what I wanted for him. And, uh, and but... You know, like um, I, I realized after after a while that I cannot decide for him. You know what? Um, you know, this is his life, and he has to do it in his way. And I even helped him. I went to Vegas and helped him. Um, you know, get uh, accepted to a certain school and be, you know start the process of being a, a UFC fighter. But I, I can tell you that. For me, it was a very big disappointment that uh, the student that I gave so much to eventually chose to take it and use it in a in a in an octagon. Um, that you know, for me, it is the opposite of of uh, what karate should. You know, I kind of felt like I failed with him, and you know in. But on the other hand, I am happy that, you know, if he is happy, I don't know, we are not talking, we are not in uh, in touch for a few years now, ever since he's, he's been there. Because I think this, you know, this uh, MMA thing kind of like changed him as a person also. And uh, and we are, we don't, we no longer have like a mutual language to to speak of, yeah. And, but I, I have, I can think about students that I have that are now teachers by their own rights and I I, I have I that I have uh, that are really like my brothers yeah like let's say uh, Lucio Maurino which is a legend by himself in karate is uh, I think five times world champion WKF is a is, he is a legend yeah and um, and you know in the last what I don't know but maybe 12 or 11 years I have been teaching him Wei Chi Liu, and, and he's now he has his dojo where he teaches Kurio Uchinandi, which is the Patrick McCartney style, and also he has Wei Chi Liu lessons and sports karate lessons, and he's a, he's an amazing martial artist, and and I think this is something that I'm very proud of because he because I I helped bro I helped I helped um you know, create not only in Israel, but in Italy, a dojo full of people that are amazing. His students are amazing. And they, what you spoke about, the Kizuna aspect, that, uh, you know, like the supporting of each other and supporting of the sensei and the creation of martial artists by the sensei is very, very uh, prevalent in his dojo. 
you can see it very, very clearly. And he's an amazing person. And mainly he's a man. Yeah? He's a police officer. And, you know, he works in the morning in the police. And then he, every evening he comes and he teaches in the dojo. And he has like a very, you know, like a very firm family. And he's a man. Yeah, He is what I think a martial arts artist should be. And, and talking about Shinjo Sensei, you know, he when I was living there for years and I was his, his assistant, he, he always said, you know, you cannot make money off of martial arts or karate. So he was an insurance agent. Yeah. And all big and famous uh, masters of karate, of Okinawan karate, they, were, they all had a day job. Yeah. Because if they didn't have a day job, then something would be soured in, in their art. Yeah? And, and Shinjo Sensei always said, yeah, morning time, you work. Yeah? Evening time, you go train. And if you don't have this balance in life, then you will not be a good martial artist. And I've, I know, you know, in Israel, we have this, in our society, we have this thing that, that uh, you know, the ultra religious people in Israel, they say, we don't, we don't work, we just study, and they expect the government to pay them their, their money, you know, uh, they give them like uh, every month, they give them money. And, you know, um, we, you know, we are, I'm, th I'm thinking about it, yeah? half of the country is thinking that too, that, um, yeah, you, you can work, yeah, and like, you, it's not that you can work, you should work, because what, what, uh, what is a monk, what does a monk can teach me about real life, yeah? If you're hiding in some kind of a cave and praying all the time, what can you teach someone about spirituality, about real life? So if you're a martial artist and you surround yourself with uh, your your fans or students or whatever that you control very, very highly, yeah? But you don't go to work. You don't have interactions with normal people. You're just being in your dojo and, you know, you're the king then you are not really a martial artist. Yeah? You are, it, it is very easy for you to inflate, to become inflated with ego. It is really, you see those people becoming uh, poisonous gurus sometimes. Yeah, And sometimes you see it in martial arts also, less in Okinawa, worldwide, you can see it a lot. That people that started out as, as dojos, they became cults. Yeah, And so it is very, very important, I think, to when, to manage the, the power that you have as a sensei or as a martial artist uh, and to do good things with it. Yeah. Because when you see, let's say, let's let's talk about uh, the last role that I had, yeah, of, of the this series that is now currently being aired. I am playing a, a police officer that is he, with heinous doing heinous uh, deeds, yeah, killing a boy and He's a psychopath and, you know, he's a very evil person, yeah? He's a very, like, a villain. And when I had to research for this character, I said, okay, because, because the deeds that he's doing is so terrible, I have to find a way to make him more, you know, like, so, so the people would watch him, they would kind of, like, understand him. Even, even when they watch him, they said, I have this person inside of me if I don't look after myself then i can become him yeah and so i i you know i searched and searched and i found out that the devil figure in the israeli mysticism in the jewish mysticism i'm sorry is not portrayed as evil it's not good and evil yeah it is better than good yeah what do you mean better than good god created them so much better than the people and he is better than than good than that he becomes uh, to be judging of those people. Yeah? He, and you see it with terrorists. Terrorists, they won't say, I'm the bad guy. They say, what do you mean? You're the bad guy. You're not doing anything for for the cause. I am doing what you should be doing. Yeah? I'm doing more than, 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 than is necessary. And in fact, when you talk about Wei Chi Ryu, there is this, uh, you know, there is this uh, uh, principle of, you know the the changing of the uh, of the opposites yeah so you know in karate when you reach the most extreme point of being hard then 
in one min in one millisecond you became soft you become soft eh? and when you when you reach the highest point then in one second you become low this is kata this is good kata always you you to switch to reverse the opposites to reverse the trends you must reach the most extreme point okay so you see it in jail yeah many people in jail they become saints after after you know being in in the low ground for many years they come out and they become like a saint yeah uh, but so you you see teachers they become they become uh, what they are they you know what they teach against you see martial artists artists that are becoming uh, not good not in the character not character of a martial artist but the character of a you know of a bad bad person yeah so so you so there's a lot of things that you can learn from kata it is called in psychology an antiodromia meaning a reverse of of uh, of a quality because you reached the most extreme point of it